Morning everybody. Today we're doing a little review of this 2007 Hyundai Tiburon. This is the GT trim. 2007 was the penultimate year for the Hyundai Tiburon. It was actually the first year that they redesigned the front. It has a 2.7 liter V6 engine making 172 horsepower and 181 foot-pounds of torque. And back in its day, competitors were Scion TC, Mitsubishi Eclipse, Mazda RX-8 maybe, Honda Civic Si. This is sort of the forgotten sports car unless you played Need for Speed Underground 2. has a four-speed automatic. And this is James. Say hi, James. Hi. So this is the owner of this car. Awesome. How long have you had the car? Uh, roughly two years. Bought it in the middle of the pandemic, um, March of 2020. Were you specifically looking for a Tiburon, or did you just come across it? No, I just came across it, so um, there's a military base like near where I live, and I just drove through one day and saw it, and it had roughly 68,000 miles at the time, and my neighbor had one, uh, he had the four-cylinder one, and I showed it to him, and he was like, you gotta get, you have to buy it, so I was like, alright, so um, bought it, and yeah, here, here I am. <laughs> Very cool. So we're going to take this on a little drive, about 25 miles, variety of roads, twisties, highways, suburban roads. And this review will be mainly focused on the driving experience. How does the car handle? What's the steering feel? Road noise, engine noise. We're not going to get too specifics about specs and infotainment because there wasn't much and actually that's been changed out in this vehicle. So we'll get out on the road. And then we'll give it a short score. Before we get on the road, we're going to start off in the back seat. Yes, there is a back seat in the 2007 Hyundai Tiburon. Uh, it is hard, you could hardly call it a, uh, a seat though. I am six feet, six feet one. My legs are very much smushed into the back of the seat, and the front seat's actually moved forward. This is nowhere near as far back as I would need it for my driving position. Headroom is practically practically non-existent. The roof line comes back very uh, sharply, and my head is squished into the rear window. So unless you're carrying a toddler, an infant, or a Pomeranian, this is not a very comfortable place to be. Um, let's talk about the blind spot, though. You have a pretty moderate-sized seat pillar. It's not the best, not the worst. The rear window is very large, very generous. So, given the style of car, visibility is not horrible. Let's hope the front seat is better. Okay, here we are in the front seat of the Hyundai Tiburon. The seats are definitely uh, sport-styled seats, aggressive uh, bolstering on the uh, bottom cushion and on the back so they hold you in place nicely. Now, if you look around the cabin, uh, materials are not the greatest. Uh, nice stylish round dials, but a lot of hard plastic everywhere. You do have a... Uh, conventional shifter with a manual mode that is backwards from my liking. Um, manual parking brake, basic steering wheel uh, with no uh, controls on it. Adequate headroom, pretty good. The seats adjust forward and back but not up and down much. The doors have a padded material on the top. Pretty firm but somewhat padded material for the armrest. But yeah, decent amount of plastics around here. It's, it's definitely not a luxury vehicle, but I don't believe that's the point. The point is the driving experience, which we will get to next. Oh, ignore the check engine light. Okay. <laughs> right, normal key ignition. This is definitely a, uh, a sports car, even next to a sedan. I'm several inches lower than they are. <laughs> All right, we'll test throttle response here. Pretty immediate throttle response. It does have a manual throttle cable, so you don't have to go through a computer so much. Let off the gas, the, the exhaust does get out of the way, so it does allow you to cruise somewhat. Yeah, you, if you have it like kind of right at 2000 or like right in between two and three, and you just let off it, it's quieter. Yeah, and honestly, 
you actually forget about the road noise. There's not a lot of it, actually, if you just kind of isolate it. Side mirrors are a bit on the small side, so you definitely have to watch your, your blind spots. Hey, pillows are a bit thick, uh, just because of this extra speaker here. And the uh, front windshield is a bit on the short side. Is this black trim something you added? Yeah. Okay. So if that wasn't there, front visibility would be a little bit better, but... Yeah, so I put this screen in. Originally it had um, a cassette player and a CD player. It had, I think, six channels for your radio station. Um, uh, this is particular to the GT trim, having the screen for your climate controls and then the buttons down here. The other trims have a smaller Kenwood system. It's amazing how a car from 2007, it's a sports car and it still only had a four-speed transmission. Yeah. So it definitely hurts the uh, fuel economy. EPA rated this back in the day. They rated it at 19 city, 26 highway. They then later revised it to 17 city, 24 highway. So we'll see what we get on today's drive. Yeah, so this car was a uh, custom ordered car. Um, it's an earlier VIN number for the 2007 year. So usually these cars, the GT trims, come with a 5-speed manual, and then the uh, SE trim comes with a 6-speed manual. Uh, the 4-speed auto is an option that you can get. Um, so this is a GT car option with the 4-speed, without the sunroof, with the upgraded sound system. So I'll put it into the manual mode. Give it a launch as one. Definitely a delay on the upshift. And there you go, there's all your gears. And then it goes into an overdrive. Yeah, I can I could feel that when I let off the gas the RPM went down by about five hundred. Yeah. And if I downshift, I downshifts are faster than the upshifts. By a little bit. The seat cushion bolstering is, is rather aggressive. It definitely holds you in place, although the seat cushion angle is a bit flat, so I don't actually have a bunch of thigh support towards the uh, the front of my legs. So this is the uh, next to highest trim? Yeah, so this is the luxury model, and then the one after this, the SE, is the sport model. All right, so does the sport model get the buttons that aren't buttons here? The steering wheel is a bit on the, the smaller side, which I think is more definitely more sport-oriented. probably feels like a 14, maybe 15-inch wheel. Pretty uh, thin around, but you have a nice grip on it. Yeah, those side mirrors are... Not only are they small, but they're like magnified, so they don't give you a great sense of you know, depth perception. <laughs> now, is there a way to turn traction control off in this car? No. No, okay. So this car has a pretty dialed back traction control. So, um, you'll get wheel spin if you just floor it off a stoplight and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure these don't have stability control. Front engine, front wheel drive, so yep. I would expect at the limit there's some understeer. A little bit of understeer. Um, actually, in my experiences, you'll get more of uh, snap oversteer. So the back end of this car is kind of light. It tries to rotate a little bit on you, which is nice. nice. Like the tail of a shark. Yeah. Hence Tiburon. Alright. On to the twisties we go. Some, uh, some understeer. Those tires are trying to hold on. And in a bumpy road like that. Yeah, it currently has a uh, Michelin Pilot Sport all seasons. So uh, pretty, pretty good in my Off throttle, very neutral, a little bit understeer. Not much. But it's it's quite good. Feels planted. Not not much body roll at all, which you'd expect from this kind of vehicle. Yeah, the steering is quick, it's snappy. It has a um, very linear feel. It's not. It doesn't necessarily have a dartiness to it. It just. It does what you want it to do. Ratio is pretty quick. It definitely has a firmer edge to it, but it's livable. Absolutely. I'll definitely say if you're getting manual mode, it's fun. This car has a lot of engine braking. Um, it's 
especially in manual mode, as soon as you let off, if you're in a higher gear, it'll on it, like, it just start slowing you yeah, down. So if I, go to, I have to flip my brain backwards from what I think it should be. A direct connection between the gas pedal and the engine. Very nice sounding exhaust. Aftermarket support for this car is pretty sad. There's really not much, so uh, most of the stuff you'll find for these are all custom made. It's not the fastest, it's probably not the sharpest, but it does a lot of things well. Big hatchback, you can fold down those rear seats and get even more space. Not many people know about these. The people that do know about these love them. Uh, all of my friends that have them, I've never heard a bad thing. Handle speed bumps pretty okay. What size wheels are on it? 17. 17 inch wheels. Okay. So it's got a 17 inch wheel, 215 tire, and a 45 millimeter sidewall. Okay. So, kind of low profile. Yeah, it's a very linear steering feel. There's, there's some cars where if you crack the wheel beyond a certain angle, the steering ratio quickens up. I don't think it changes at all. It's, it's quite linear. It's nice. starts to come around us a little bit. Yeah. It's a fun car. Yeah, it is not a super fast car. It, it sounds faster than it is. Yeah, it's really not that fast. I mean, 172 horsepower, that's 13 less than my Mazda that has a four-cylinder. Yep, but uh, it has pretty good response if you're like, kind of in the power band doing a roll, but from a dig it's not really. Nice change of direction, the rear axle feels lively, it's kind of light on its feet. 35 miles an hour, about 1500 RPM, so it, it tries to give you fuel economy. It, it, tries. it tries. It tries. I mean, this car, 2007 was the next to last year. 2008 is when gas prices went crazy. And so I'm sure people, you know, they wanted to get something more fuel efficient. They look at a small car like this and they see it only gets upper teens, low 20s. And I think they were like, yeah, this, who's going to buy this now? The guy in the minivan behind me wants to go faster. Transmission is somewhat eager to downshift. You have to push into it a little bit and then convince it to to jump down, but it'll do it. The one thing, the only thing I will say that I'm not really a fan of this car is it auto upshifts. So if you like rev it all the way out, it will auto upshift, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, you're saying in the manual mode it'll do that? Yeah, in the manual mode it'll auto upshift. Yeah, a lot of cars will do that just to. They don't trust you. They're trying to preserve the life of the transmission. Away, uh, a little bit past red line. Red line's about 6,500 yeah, RPM. 6, and I will say having a big kind of hatch that when you go over bumps, 
you don't so much feel it as much as you hear it resonating in that open hatch area. The steering feels nice. It has a very nice kind of heavy elastic feeling. It has a little bit more of a relaxed feeling. Like I said, it's not darty, but it's very predictable and linear. Speed limit's going up. I mean, it's, it's eager to play. It'll give you everything it's got. It just doesn't have much. It does not have much. Nope. <laughs> we'll do the jiggle test. A little bit, but it's not over. It's not wallowy. It's not roly poly. And it's trying to be somewhat livable, so they did put a little bit of cushion in there. Yep. Oh yeah, it has very minimal body roll. Oh yeah. And Bassie has practically no body roll. A little bit of torque steer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you push into it... It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> We'll say that the side windows are a bit short. The, the door sill is quite high, so that does also cut. I mean, it helps with the styling, but hurts overall visibility. It's it's okay. My my biggest issue is the magnification on the side mirrors, especially the left one. It makes things. It just. I wish it was a little bit more a wide angle. Also, this is a um, self-learning transmission. So as you drive the car uh, and you drive it in manual mode. And like learns where you like to shift and everything and how you like to drive the transmission will just start machine learning that which is kind of nice so on the highway 65 miles an hour you're just above 2500 rpm so we definitely make a highway drives a bit droney it's like now i can see why the highway mileage is just mid 20s because you're not even they have like one more here Road noise isn't bad. The drone does get bad, but if you let off and kind of leave it there, it's not fun. Um, a little bit of wind noise, but nothing crazy. And you can definitely still talk in a normal talking. Yeah, and you're hearing most of the wind noise like over the windshield. It's not so much on the sides, it's just in the it's overall just shape of the car. I love the giant grab handle. This is definitely. Yeah, it's like the. It's definitely the domestic partner, you're going too fast, handle. Yep. Yeah, Man, yeah. even if you're not breaking the law, it sounds like it. Oh, yeah. Then, a moment of quiet. And we're back. Even if you have the throttles a little bit, I'm just enough to maintain 65 miles an hour right now, and it's just. Another nice thing about this car is it doesn't really have like um, it doesn't really have like any major issues like being maintenance items that. Um, Nice, predictable handling and steering. This is an enjoyable car. It's not super fast, but if you, if you want to get in trouble, you could get in trouble with this thing. Oh yeah, there's no big reliability issues with this. At the end of the day, there's a Hyundai and the engine came in a lot of different cars, so. It was right around the era of late 2000s when Hyundai was really starting to get their act together. Yep. They, uh, after
after this, they introduced the Genesis in 2009, and then the Veloster, uh, I think in like... 2011, 2011, yeah. The Veloster is a true replacement for this, the Genesis was their all new sports car. Yeah, if you want a coupe that is practical, reliable, a little bit on the loud side, a little bit on the slow side, but it's fun. And that's what this that's what this category was. This kind of slightly underpowered two-door sports coupes from the mid-2000s. This would be a, a good option. Now that the test drive is completed, let's give the 2007 Hyundai Tiburon GT a Schwartz score. The Schwartz score is broken down into 12 categories with a total potential score of 100. Scores are given right after the test drive when impressions are still fresh. Exterior styling of the 2007 Hyundai Tiburon has its strengths and weaknesses. The car sits with an aggressive stance ready to attack the road. A strong character line, the nicely proportioned wing, and unique taillight design are standouts. However, the 2007 refresh brought lots of plastic bracing into the front grille and the rear fenders are uninspired. The expression of the front end of the car is reminiscent of Randall Boggs' grin from Monsters, Inc. It earns a 4 out of 10. Interior materials are lackluster. While the door and armrest are sufficiently padded, mid-2000s plastics make their way onto practically every other surface in the vehicle. The circular air vents are a nice touch, but in the end, the interior seems more closely related to the accents than anything else in the Hyundai family. It gets a 3 out of 10 here. The front seats have decent mid-back support and bolstering. The leather trim and manual lumbar adjustments are nice touches in the GT trim. However, shoulder support is lacking, and I couldn't find a seat back angle that was totally comfortable for me. In addition, the bolsters on the seat cushion were a bit tight on my legs, and there is no height adjustment. There is a manual adjustment for the seat cushion angle, but it, too, was hard to fine-tune. However, with ample headroom for my 6-foot figure, the front seats come out with a 5 out of 10. The rear seats, in my opinion, exist merely for the purpose of watching a grown adult attempt to fit in them and subsequently pointing and laughing at them. Legroom is a figment of Hyundai's imagination, and at six feet tall, I had to bend my neck over due to the rear window encroaching on my headroom. A better use of these seats is to fold them down permanently to gain more cargo room in the hatch. Rear seat comfort gets a 1 out of 10. Road noise is relatively hushed in the 2007 Hyundai Tiburon. Ambient sound from the tires is toned down, but resonance from potholes and bumps echoes a bit in the hatch area. For the category, the Tiburon has a refined level of road and wind noise, 3 out of 5. The engine can get vocal above 2500 RPM, but the real noise maker is the exhaust. While it makes a sonorous, meaty sound, highway cruising is accompanied with moderate droning, even with light acceleration. If you want your neighbors to wake up every time you start the car, you'll love it. Those looking for a more peaceful environment in the cabin will be disappointed. 2 out of 5 here. In terms of acceleration, where a 0 to 60 time below 3 seconds is a 10 and above 9.5 seconds is a 1, the Hyundai Tiburon with its 7.8 seconds 0 to 60 earns a 4 out of 10. The drivetrain benefits from a simple transmission and mechanical throttle body. Shifts are smooth and quick, although with a delay, particularly during upshifts in the manual mode. Throttle response is linear and direct, a byproduct of having an actual throttle cable. The 4-speed auto is happy to downshift for power or jump into an overdrive gear for fuel savings. However, having only 4 gears can be limiting at times, overall 4 out of 5 for drivetrain. Handling is quite good in the Tiburon. Minimal body roll aids in hugging the turns and the rear axle feels light on its feet, almost inducing some oversteer. However, the front engine front wheel drive design results in some expected inherent understeer and the 215 width tires can only do so much. In the end, it gets a 7 out of 10. Steering feel is a strong suit in the Tiburon. Steering inputs are direct and linear, although without the typical dartiness one would expect from a sports car. There is also a substantial steering weight with an elastic sensation, 7 out of 10. Ride quality is also surprisingly compliant for the category. While the suspension certainly has a firmer edge, bumps are absorbed somewhat before being transmitted to the cabin. Given the lack of body roll and ground clearance, the Tiburon unexpectedly rides well. It still isn't a luxurious ride and receives a 4 out of 10. Visibility in the 2007 Tiburon is a challenge, but a small one at that. High door sills aid in exterior styling, but hinder a panoramic view out. The A and C pillars are not the smallest, but are not horrendously big either. 
The rear window is wide, but the front windshield is short, and the side mirrors are small with an unusual amount of magnification that makes depth perception difficult. Overall, 2 out of 5. This brings the Schwartz score of the 2007 Hyundai Tiburon GT to 46 out of 100. Lastly, the EPA rated the 2007 Hyundai Tiburon GT with a 4-speed automatic at 17 miles per gallon city, 24 highway. We achieved 22 miles per gallon during our test drive.